My question for you all is, what's the key for season two to be locked in as the best show of the year? Because lock and key. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. Lock and Key is back on Netflix. Season two has finally premiered. I need you guys in the comments down below. Did you enjoy this season? Which one do you like more? We're going to talk about it. Spoiler free. Let's do it. And picking up three months after the end of the prior season, Evil has won and they are not alone. The Demon Dodge managed to trick the Luck family into thinking they had sent them back to the hell they came from, but instead took form in their friend Gabe and new henchwoman in Eden who got infected by a demon at the end of the season. Unbeknownst to the Locks, and thinking they are now free from these evil demons, our heroes spend most of the season dealing with a separate problem, and that is growing up. So that's your basic premise for season two, a premise that I thought was extremely interesting because now Griffin Gluck, who plays Gabe, and if you guys don't know, one of my favorite shows on Netflix ever is American Vandal. Griffin Gluck kind of got his start there, and I really like his charisma, his personality, but this time around he gets to do something a bit different. He has that evil smirk on his face every time we get to see Gabe, or quote-unquote, Gabe, because that's how we're approaching this. He does a good job. I thought there could have been more of a threatening or menacing look and feel to that character at points. I guess in that way, he does a good job of blending in, but he's good. Halea Jones plays Eden, who does a really good job. I mean, just in the first episode, she gets herself into something at this movie premiere, and you're sitting back going, all right, that character is definitely not one you want to mess with. But then, of course, you have Tyler and Kinsey, and uh, these actors here, Connor Jessup, Amelia Jones, Jackson Robert Scott. Scott, I still, it's hard to see past him being the little kid from It, but he's so good in this role. He's believable, he's charismatic, he has that confidence that most kids his age are lacking, and I believe that confidence is moving even more forward in this season. We're getting to see our characters grow up just a bit. And because of that, of course, uh, the rule being, once you hit that age, you begin to kind of forget about all of this magic to start with. That's one thing we see their mother dealing with. I mean, just in the midst of the conversation, Darby Stanchfield, who plays Nina, she is uh, trying to figure out, okay, did I just see that happen? Is the magic actually there? As a tear rolls down my eye. It's a really sweet concept, and lock and key in general there's so much we're able to do with this show, and we saw numerous examples of season one. And this season, that's no different. The vast and various amount of keys that they use. Of course, the returning ones, uh, the ones that we've seen before, but you have new ones like a key that makes you fly, a key that brings about chains, and of course, the villainous mission to do something that I was not expecting. Now, it's a storyline that you could probably predict where it's going to end up, at least by the end of season two, if not in general. Uh, but it's one that causes this show to become noticeably darker this time around. Kind of like how Harry Potter, with each passing film, you start out with that whimsy and that magic. Uh, but as you progress, even though it still has its quirky elements and that sense of humor, which I think works most of the time, uh, this season, there is a lot here that makes me look at this show and saying, okay, it's slowly becoming more adult, and I appreciate that. And then you also have, you know, obviously the threat of all of the villainous characters, but the threat of the passing of time. Because once you hit that age, it's almost like your, your body and your brain is reprogrammed to just not see the magic happening around you. And that story in itself is something that's amplified much more so in season two causes it to become darker. You also have the imagery here. A couple of deaths that I don't think are gruesome enough to steer kids away in general, but definitely more gruesome than last season. You have these giant spiders, a lot of imagery that uh, becomes really fascinating. From my perspective, looking at this show, you know, season one, you have a lot of that teen angst, and it's definitely still there, but it's not as prominent this time around. They're focused much more on the story, a story that you know, is a bit conventional from a certain point of view, but one that I think will have fans of this show in its grasp and lead you on a journey and adventure. And it all comes down to the characters, right? If these characters aren't compelling, our main group here, and then of course the side players that filter in and out, then we're not going to care about this show. And fortunately, the characters overcome a lot of those issues I have with 
conventional and really predictability within this story. I love the fact that this season showcases the origin of the keys themselves. And I'm not entirely sure how this ties back into the comic book if they did that there or if this is a new thought, but fleshing out this world through flashbacks to explore the key house and the past of Matheson is really integral for a show like this and one that's going to make itself, I believe, even more prominent in future seasons. And I have a feeling this will get renewed. The first season performed fairly well. Uh, and the fact that season two gets darker, maybe more intense, maybe a more impactful story, is only good news. And of course, we still have the, the high school teen drama that I'm just not the biggest fan of in a show like this. You could, uh, I guess, compare it to some of the shows on the CW, even though there's a fair share of shows on there that I absolutely love, uh, but some of those storylines I just wasn't all that invested in. But the fact that these characters feel so human and you know, getting into this magic, going on these quests, using these keys. I mean, at this point in season two, they're just kind of using them and not really thinking about the repercussions and not thinking that that evil is still here, is still present. Sometimes those flashbacks that I mentioned can take you out of that rampant buildup when we're going towards a specific scene, maybe at the end of every episode, we'll get a flashback and it's kind of like, oh man, we had so much momentum there and it almost shot it down. But thankfully, once we get back in, Lock and Key Season 2 almost builds on what made Season 1 so much fun. And I had a good time with Season 2. I really did. I think fans of this show are going to be happy. All of the character decisions make sense. And the newcomers, the very few newcomers, but the newcomers nonetheless, uh, they make an impact for sure. Also, I have to talk about the special effects, which are really good. The look of the show, it has that darkness, that grittiness, but every time we use a key and we feel that magic visually, uh, it works extremely well. But overall, I need you guys in the comments down below. Did you enjoy season two and how you feeling about Lock and Key so far? This world is so magical. And while there are a few times it loses sight of its goal, season two stays on track and builds on what makes this show so much fun. I'm going to 72% with my score. If you guys enjoyed this video and you like these Netflix reviews every single weekend, be sure to drop your thumbs up down below and stay tuned. We have a Denis Villeneuve ranking and my updated Oscar predictions coming to this channel along with more Netflix reviews because that's what we do. Also, this channel is almost to 100K. So if you guys are here for the first time and you're watching this video and you're like, oh, this guy, maybe I should follow him. If you'd like to do that, that would be fantastic. Appreciate you guys big time. Um, what's a good lock and key pun? I've ran out of good puns. I never had good puns. All right, I'll see you soon.